What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Nothing. Me? <laughs> just hanging around. XRP is not doing anything. It's just hanging around at 62 cents. And you say, okay, but I like XRP. What's wrong with that, Josh? There's millions, and I mean literally millions of dollars being made in hours, days, and weeks right now in other crypto projects. And I'm gonna outline a couple that could be big winners in the days ahead. I don't, I don't mean to clown so hard on XRP, but it's out of frustration. At some point, you gotta make sense of what's happening in these crypto markets, and you gotta realize that these older legacy coins, they've turned into stable coins because nobody's trading them. Very few people, very little price action. You gotta go where the money's flowing. The crypto cycle is a very short short window of time. We have under two years. Now that we are in this bull cycle phase, we've got a very limited amount of time in which you can take advantage of these types of moves. One of the interesting moves that I saw yesterday that I had to bring to your guys' attention was surrounding the controversial person and case of P. Diddy, who's in the news everywhere right now. I like to refer to him as the diddler, P. Diddy the diddler. I created this AI picture. I tried to give it some instruction. I said, I want, I want P. Diddy. Sean Puffy uh, Combs, I want him uh, in the theme of the Riddler, but I, with some sexual overtones, this is what it gave me, the diddler. Anyways, right, and it's not even funny because this guy's hurt a lot of people, or at least allegedly has hurt a lot of people, and he's got to work on that. But here's what's interesting. Somebody simply turned around, and in light of the fact that Bitcoin's pumping, they created a P. Diddy coin. And in hours, it went up 30,000% minting millionaires off of a popular news story. Now, I'm gonna take a brief moment. I'm actually gonna defend what's happening right now because some people will just say this is pure madness, this is lunacy, uh, you know, that someone can throw a word or coin into the system and money's just flowing into it. This is the wild, wild west, right? And what made the wild, wild west interesting back in the day is that there was all this land and resources available and people made this massive migration and flight from the east out to the west to try to get in the gold mining business or the saloon business or whatever type of activity they could have. Some of it was lawlessness, but they were trying to go out there and make their fortune because fortunes were being made. And that's similar what's happening with crypto. It is the wild, wild west. And there's a very short window of time. And that's the main point about this video. And I think it's important that we actually do a little clowning on some of these older legacy projects because they're not the ones that are making that kind of money. Unfortunately, it's the P. Diddy coin. Now, I had to share this with you guys because it was just too funny. The headline caption on this particular project was, I choose gay every time. Now, this literally how that coin was pitched into the marketplace. This is what's happening. You're bringing resources, people, and community together. And this is where people are going to begin to study the impact and the effect of community movements. And this is where you're seeing money being made because there is huge power in whatever we pay attention to. That's the reason why that term is used, to pay attention, because your attention has value. I appreciate you guys paying attention to me today and my thoughts here on YouTube on the Stocks with Josh show. Uh, on that note, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for already hitting the like. Say hi, throw a heart in the comment, and hit subscribe to keep getting uh, crypto updates, hot news updates. I've got a lot to cover with you guys today because it's been an interesting news day. I want to briefly talk about what's going on with Coinbase because it in particular is going to affect uh, the altcoin rally or the fact that we have not yet gotten an altcoin rally. And I think the reason why we've seen coins like the meme coins and Bitcoin uh, take off so far this year and not seen the alts move a great deal is because they're still under this lawsuit from the SEC. And this has not been worked out yet. I'm gonna read you guys a headline on that point. SEC lawsuit against Coinbase advances. Now, in this situation, the SEC claims that they sold unregistered securities as well as offering unregistered securities through their staking program. 
And I found it interesting what the Coinbase lawyers basically said. They t attempted to spin this uh, loss on the part of Coinbase. Now, it's not an overall loss, but what happened is Coinbase was asking the judge to throw out the case, and the judge said, no, no, we're not throwing it out. You're going to have to mitigate this in court with the SEC. So that is a loss. It's not what they wanted. But their lawyer turned around and said, actually, this is a win for us because we want to go to the table with the SEC. And through this lawsuit, we're going to force the SEC to bring us the regulation that they have not been giving to us. And I want to acknowledge that they're 100% right. Everybody's been asking the SEC to provide them this mysterious regulation, but the truth is they don't want to go out on a limb and actually do their job and do the hard work of sorting all of this out because the truth is they don't know what they're doing. Instead, they're waiting for things to break and they're waiting for things to fall through the crack so that they can then step in and use it as an opportunity to expand their power. And on that note, and I'm going to get into Coinbase technicals in a minute, I'm going to shout out some potential uh, projects where big money can be made. I'm not talking P. Diddy, the diddler coin. I'm talking about some other projects that I think are a little bit more palatable and are moving potentially slow enough for some of you guys to grab a hold of because those types of projects are our flash in the pan. We're looking for something that we can actually take a position in and ride up on the next wave that comes down the road with Bitcoin once Bitcoin proves that it's going to go higher right now. You know we're on the deciding line at 70k uh, when it comes to whether or not Bitcoin is going to go up or spend some more time uh, pulling back, which it really hasn't done in the last year. I'm going to cover that here in just a minute as well. But I have to take a step back. We got to talk about the monumental news day that we're in, in that Sam Bankman Freed, uh, my wife pointed out that his name Freed is actually spelled the same way that Fried is, F-R-I-E-D. So Sam Bankman has getting himself fried in the court today because it's sentencing, sentencing day. The judge is going to determine whether or not he could get potentially a max sentence of up to 100 years or if he could get a lighter sentence. As far as his defense attorneys have suggested, the max sentence that he should be given is six years, but he could easily receive anywhere from 30 to 50 years. And it's going to be we're going to have to watch the outcome of this uh, because I found the entire dialogue on the news of this situation. I found the entire dialogue on the part of the defense is absolutely ridiculous. They suggested that somehow to even uh, consider putting him in prison for defrauding billions of dollars from millions of Americans. His defense said that it would be barbaric and it would be a return to the Stone Age to put this civil man in prison for that number of years. Guys, they'll have no problem putting you and I in prison for a fraction of what this man has done. He has hurt a lot of people. There are people that made poor decisions, right? They shouldn't have been, they should have been more diversified. But the fact is they got involved in the hype. They put their money on FTX and a lot of them lost their life savings. And the fact is that Gary Gensler from the SEC, even though he had been visiting with FTX and a lot of the politicians had been collecting uh, donations from FTX, nobody took a minute to go over there and even find out they did they didn't even have a chief financial officer here they were a billion dollar company donating to politicians their face was everywhere they were doing super bowl ads and they didn't even have a cfo just a bunch of kids playing down in the bahamas gambling with all of your guys's money nobody was watching the store gary gensler was supposed to be watching the store but he wasn't the sec neglected it now they're going after coinbase which is a publicly traded company. But let me just read off to you guys some of the altcoins that are specifically under the SEC's uh, suggestion that they're a security. Sol, ADA, Matic, File, Sand, Flow, ICP, Near Protocol, BNB, Mana, Algo, Luna, AMP, XRP. All of those are considered securities. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, as I've studied this subject, I actually would agree that these are unregistered securities because the fact of the matter is this is a uh, mechanism that people used to sell something, to raise capital, to produce the engineering and the programming that was needed to launch these coins. That is essentially the business of a security and it's for the purpose of speculation. And the fact is these were not regulated, these were not registered with the SEC, but, 
because they are different, there was no path provided by the SEC to register them. So this has had a little bit of a pullback on the Coinbase chart. I'm going to go into uh, the Coinbase real quick and give you guys my thoughts, super clear thoughts right now on Coinbase, because I think the path up or down has been clearly defined in the charts. Let me take the, you guys into the charts and show you that. Okay, I cannot make this any simpler. The first thing I wanna point out is that we have this ascending wedge. Ascending wedges are bearish. This will move within this wedge and at some point they often break to the downside. Very, very rarely do they break to the upside. I don't necessarily see that happening. And the few times in which these do break to the upside, those are most often what would be referred to as fake outs. So they'll go up, but then they'll come back in. They'll vacillate more and come to the downside. And so the fact is, as we get closer and closer to the point of the spear on the meeting up lines of this ascending wedge, we know that at some point we're going to break to the downside. Now, we could actually go quite high. I mean, these two meet up around $322. And if we do at any point have a surge or blow off top with Bitcoin, in my opinion, the absolute max price that I see uh, for Coinbase would be $334. And you'll say, okay, Josh, how could we even determine if a price like that could be achieved? Well, it's achieved at the $284 price line because this is a pretty significant resistance line. And if we were to, on the daily chart, get above it and close, and then the following day, this is important because sometimes I've had to explain this the way that supports and resistance work over a 24-hour window. You want to see it get above and close above 284. And then the following day, it has to open above 284. Because if in the pre-market hours, it, it falls back beneath 284, then that's a fake signal. So we want to see it open and we want to see it close above 284 open above 284. Now, similarly, and if it happened, then we could be looking for a move as high as 334. Now, similarly, the other scenario would be that it would close beneath 251. 251 is a very strategic support level. And right now it's worked, it previously worked as resistance. We see that that was resistance here, but once it broke out above and we got up to this higher level, it came back and it worked as support. Just the other day, it came back to this general area and it worked as support. Now, if that fails to happen and we get a close beneath 251 and the following morning it opens beneath 251, then just in the same way that we could go higher if we got above 284, we could get all the way back to previous structure support, which is down at 180. Now, I am not suggesting that that type of thing would be done in a single day. That type of move would occur over the period of a couple months. And so I will point out to you guys that the risk to reward is less favorable for a bullish move because of how much we've already come up so far. So we're not at the beginning of the bullish move. If you wanted to be a high risk taker, you would do it down here. Now we're somewhat potentially at the end of the bullish move. And uh, the fact is that we have no clue whether or not Bitcoin is going on some parabolic move above 100K. It's yet to be seen. And until that's seen, it's very possible that we're getting near to the end of the road of where Coinbase can reach. And I wanted you guys to have those fresh technicals. You would consider taking a risk on Coinbase if we were to come down to my lower target, that's where you're gonna have your safest entry to potentially go long again. If Bitcoin were to pull back for the next couple months, it wouldn't shock me if we got all the way down to that price. And down at that price is when everybody would say that everything was over. That's where you would consider being a heavier risk taker and making a longer term investment decision. At that day, nobody will want it. And everybody will be not interested at that point because of how much it's beaten up. But the way the technicals work, it tells you, these technicals tell you where to take higher risk and where to take risk off the table. All right, I'm gonna just refresh in my thoughts with you guys. What are some crypto projects where big money could be made? Not, like I said, not the P. Diddy coin, but some other coins that could actually produce some really big results. I'm gonna share that with you here in just a minute. Let me take a moment and talk about the MEXC trading platform. Now, this is where you can get some of these early projects because if you're only waiting 
or only investing in projects that are currently on Coinbase, you're getting to them pretty late. By the time you've gotten to them, they've run up a ton. Now, when you're not looking at Coinbase and you're looking at other exchanges, it's the wild, wild west. Just the other day, we saw KuCoin. They came under charges from the Department of Justice, suggesting that they were running a massive money laundering uh, scheme. And so whenever you're putting money on an exchange that isn't Coinbase, the fact is that it is still the wild, wild west, and you need to realize that there are risks there. But the truth is that is often the only place where you're gonna get these really big returns that you hear people making millions of dollars in the course of 24 hours or even hours. The only place you're gonna get them are on platforms like MEXC. Now I've got a link in the top pinned comment for MEXC, but to be clear, MEXC is restricted for people in the United States. But so you then need a NordVPN router, and I've got a link for that as well. But I wanted to make a point with you guys about this today. It is not illegal for US citizens to use the platform. However, it is essentially an unregistered platform for US investors. And so there's the difference. It's not illegal for you to go onto the platform and to trade and to buy and sell crypto. However, they cannot legally make it available for you in the United States. And so the way that that works is to remove the risk for them by using a NordVPN router because it shows on their end that they didn't sell securities or unregistered securities to US citizens, they sold it to someone in Iceland or Sweden. And that's the way the, the NordVPN router works. It points your location somewhere else. So now I know that some of that's new for you guys. You can click on the link to those two uh, sites and you can learn more about it, NordVPN, MEXC. I'm simply, I'm simply sharing that with you because that is where I'm buying projects earlier before they get to Coinbase. Now let's discuss some of those projects that are available that you can invest in before they get to Coinbase. Now, here's the main point I wanna make about some of these suggested cryptos that I'm gonna give you. They're very risky. I would not put anything in them that you could not afford to lose, but these have not had a parabolic move in a crypto cycle. Now, the other day I did a poll on YouTube to ask everybody which uh, crypto was going to be the best runner in this bull cycle. And I gave the choices of SHIB, Pepe, and Floki. Now the results were interesting and I'm, I'm going to make this point to you guys today. Hands down, SHIB was the winner. But here's the point. It won by over 70% and all the rest had a much smaller percentage. And I'm going to tell everybody who took that poll, you guys are dead wrong, okay? The only reason why SHIB won that is because SHIB is the really the only crypto that most retail investors have access to. And so because they've purchased it, they're wanting it to skyrocket and be the biggest winner. But it's just not the way this works. And I'm here to give you guys the straight facts. You need a reality check. You're only going to make big money in crypto projects that are emerging newer crypto projects. Now, those are gonna be the highest risk, but it's the old saying, higher the risk, the higher the reward. Once they've run up the way that SHIB has run up, the fact is SHIB and Doge, which I like Doge right now, you guys know that, and I have SHIB right now as well. The fact is these are legacy meme coins. They're, they're more stable. They're not gonna have the drops that these newer coins might have, but they are legacy and they're not going to be the biggest winners in 2024. I'll tell you guys that right now. And if you think they are, then you're part of that initial clip group that's still waiting around for XRP to break out from being a 62 cent stable coin. So here are some of the names that are going to do well. Bonk. Bonk is the new meme coin on the Solana blockchain. And we've seen that Solana has been outperforming so far Ethereum. It's not, not saying that it's a better project than Ethereum or that you should sell your Ethereum and buy Solana, but I'm telling you that Solana is outperforming Ethereum right now. And Bonk is the new meme coin on that project and it hasn't gone through its big parabolic move because the altcoins haven't run yet. And so the fact is, as far as overall percentage move, there's no way that Bonk won't outperform SHIB once the altcoin party kicks off, which we won't get until we get past some of this nonsense with the SEC. 
Now I'm gonna give you guys some other important crypto projects that are gonna outperform a lot of cryptos that you guys are hoping are gonna make you millionaires, but they're not, they're simply not. Not unless you are invest investing $500,000 and you're hoping for uh, it to essentially double, then you could become a millionaire. But in these other projects, you can invest much less and potentially become a millionaire. Then you've got Solana. Now that's an example of another meme coin on the Solana blockchain. Now I'm not terribly bullish on it, but it is new and it has a much smaller market cap. Thus, it has more room to potentially move, right? And so that one's higher risk than anything I've mentioned so far, but it hasn't run yet. It hasn't gone through a crypto cycle and reached a parabolic top. It's still a baby project and it's beginning and it will have its move. Then you've got Brett. What is Brett? B-R-E-T-T. -T. This is a new meme coin on the base network. Base is all part of Coinbase's ecosystem and it hasn't been through a crypto cycle yet. And so it, when it begins to run, will likely outperform all the previous legacy meme coins and you, people will make more money investing in Brett potentially than they will in SHIB and Doge. And that's just a reality based on the market cap size. And the last one I'm gonna give you guys is Floki. Now Floki is one that I'm very bullish on. I don't know between Floki and Brett and Salama which one will do the best, but if I had to put my money on one, and I've got my money on all of these, but if I've had to put more money on one, it would be Floki. Now Floki has run a bit more, but it hasn't been through that parabolic bull moment in an altcoin season and thus it has the potential to reach a peak that the other ones have already been through something like that and may not run up at the same percentage level. You guys have to stop looking at price and begin to look at things like percentage, cycle, and market cap. They're far more relevant. And I'm gonna remind you guys that the window of investing in crypto is not as big as you think it is. The hype will tell you that it'll go on and on and on, but it's not. You're looking at under 18 months at this point where there's the potential for making these types of big gains. And the big gain opportunities are only gonna happen roughly two times, coming up out of the winter, going into a parabolic move, and on some coins you might get a third pump. But in general, it's limited. So I wanted you guys to have some names, fresh technicals on coin today. Um, I'm gonna leave it right there. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too long of a video. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for hitting the like. Thank you for watching today and hit the subscribe to continue to get content like this. The markets are hot. We're making a ton of money in crypto. It's an exciting time, but we've got to have the proper metrics to gauge the projects we're in and we got to get the right tools. That's why I'm bringing MEXC and NordVPN to you guys. In my mind, those are the right tools, but we are in the wild, wild west. And so I've got no guarantee that the SEC won't come after them. What I will tell you is that even with KuCoin, when the SEC began to go after them or target them, everything's fine. People are having the opportunity to take their money off, take their crypto off, but this is the wild, wild west. Today we got Sam Bakeman fried He is uh, like the Jesse James of crypto right now, getting his uh, possibly the noose or getting the, you know, the big sentence of what's going to happen to him for the rest of his life. It's an interesting day in crypto. I'm going to be doing a live on Stock Up with Larry Jones's page. We'll be talking about some of these things some more. Don't miss it, guys. Appreciate you joining me. Peace and blessings. Take care.